Hey, y'all, and welcome back to Winning Wednesday, the podcast. I am your host, Geneva Brown, and I have a special guest with me today. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, I am Patricia Prime. I am um, church members with Miss Gigi. I call her Gigi. Um, I've been married for uh, 30 years to my husband, Edwin. We just celebrated our 30th year wedding anniversary. We have three adult daughters, Artrila, Samantha, and Edwin A., and we live here in Byron, Georgia. All right. Thank you, Miss Pat. And yes, a, a lot of other people do call me Gigi as well. <laughs> so today's episode is about journaling. And so on this episode, I invited Miss Pat on because we both share a love for journaling and we've had personal experiences with it and how it has helped us uh, as a form of kind of like a therapy, I guess, in a spiritual way, kind of helping us to release uh, some things and some stresses that we are under in our lives. So that is what our episode will be about today. And hopefully you all will um, draw some encouragement from our episode today. So to start us off, Miss Pat, what was it that draw drawed you or brought you to journaling? So that's a great question. So um, I've actually been journaling, you know, when I thought about it for years. Um, you know, I, again, I'm, I've been married to my husband for thirty years, and I have um, books from when my kids were babies. So. Um, I don't think that I did it really consistently. It was just um, different periods in my life when I may have been struggling or I was alone because my husband, we were military and um, everywhere, you know, we, we moved several times and every time it was like, every time I had a baby, we, we moved. And I think I spent um, those days when I was new to the area or didn't know anybody um, getting frustrations or anxieties out of me onto paper. Just recently, though, probably over the last couple of years, I have been consistent with journaling and found that it's a space for me to just pray, um, release anxiety. Uh, there's sometimes, you know, you want to say something to someone and it's just not the place to say it. So I just go mm -hmm. to my journal and get it out of my head and onto paper. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that because when I, when I think about um, journaling for me, it is a way for me to just like get it out and just like pour it out because, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day for me, journaling was like dear diary so it's like <laughs> dear dear diary this is you know what has happened and this is how I feel you know about the situation but now that right. I'm older it's more like dear God this is the situation yeah. help me through this situation versus me just writing it down and getting it out mm. on paper that's one step and nothing is wrong with that but you know mm -hmm. the next time that that thing comes up again you know I would be writing the same situation down and be frustrated like why is this happening or why is this person treating me like this or why am I you know continuing to go mm -hmm. through this instead of now that I've grown up it's more and I have a relationship with the father now I'm like you know, I need to be right into you because you are the only exactly. one that knows how to handle and mm -hmm. take care of this situation. So mm -hmm. it's like another notch of us having our intimate relationship with the Lord where we can express to him exactly how we are feeling. Exactly, exactly. And I, I, I feel like a lot of my um, entries now into my journal or prayers. Um, sometimes when I'm writing, I even imagine myself not being here. So it's like legacy. Mm -hmm. um, if some, if my children were to pick up the journal and read it after I was gone, um, I think it, they'll have a pretty good picture of 
the life that I live or the type of person that I was based on my entries in my journals. I'm so glad that you said that because I too have kind of really felt that way. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a way for my daughter, my son to see who I am and see that I have had struggles just like them and that I've had to mm -hmm. ask God to help me through these situations as well. And mm -hmm. the reason why I kind of like started thinking about that was because my aunt, she found um, this family tree book um, of back in the day, because, you know, back in the day, uh, our ancestors, they had to record everything and write it down because for us, no one was, you know, keeping track of the things that was happening to us as a family, as your family grew, the things you experienced and the things that you, you know, went through. And it was just so eye opening that writing things down was a, like you say, a legacy. It's a documentation so that others can see exactly how your life is or, you know, what, whatever it is that they're going through. You know, I, I found out so much just by my aunt, just reading that to, to us. And I was like, wow, we are, we are not so different, you know, from each other and our life's experiences, you know, are the same. And I think too, that helps because sometimes we think that we are the only one that's going through something or feeling that particular way. And sometimes it can bring a level of shame or embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those are some things that from a spiritual standpoint that can take you under. But when you, um, you know, either look to see what someone else has journaled or you get to, um, you get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're a little freer because mm -hmm. now you're not meditating on that negative thought or that thought that has you, you know, ashamed or embarrassed about whatever it is that, you know, you did. Yes. Can mm -hmm. you think of a time where you felt like journaling was like a release for you? Like what was maybe, and you don't have to go into detail. Can you maybe mm -hmm. explain like a situation where you know that if you had not journaled and wrote it out, it would have just stayed with you. You would have, you would not have been able to like let it go. Yeah. There's a couple of those um times. Um I'll just I'll just talk about, you know, like being a parent. Um, you know, we we want so much for our children. Um, you know, when they're young, we have we, <laughs> we have the perfect plan for their lives. <laughs> you know, we, we have their lives all kind of mapped out and we believe that they should go a certain way. They should do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. But when they grow up, uh, regardless of what we laid, they are going to make their own decisions. And so for me, um, writing out prayers and emotions and feelings that I had once my children became adults and, uh, you know, began to share with us their um, dislikes and things that, that they were, you know, not happy about growing up. If I had allowed that stuff to stay in my head, it would have took me out of here mm -hmm. um, because I think as a parent, you're doing the best that you know to do with the tools that you have. Um, so for someone to come back and say, oh, no, you that you didn't do this right. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it takes you somewhere. So, but, um, but allowing them to share their um, frustrations then me taking it in and then me taking it to God um, allowed me to see, you know, where there were errors in my ways or to see, nope, you did the best that you knew um, to do. And then you just move on, you know, whatever I'm led to do as, as a result of journaling, I do mm -hmm. try to, uh, 
try to do those things. So if if I'm if I'm journaling and I feel led to apologize, if I feel um led to um not apologize, I'm just kind of trying to think of something off the spot, mm -hmm. but I do those things and I think that that's what's been helping me um to evolve into the woman of God that that God desires for me to be. Um I think sometimes it's we have that perfect plan for our for our lives mm -hmm. and we get in the way. He has plans for our lives. He has plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And sometimes I think we get in the way because we have our own plans. Mm -hmm. um, but journaling helps me to, to put my thoughts to paper, but it's really I'm praying Mm -hmm. um, and then sitting there with it for a little while and listening and waiting for him to speak to me through those pages that I'm writing on. And, you know, you have to be vulnerable with your own self because mm -hmm. when you are writing your thoughts down, I know for me, you know, you have those um, initial emotions that you write out, you, you know, I'm angry, I'm mad, I'm this, mm -hmm. but as you continue to write, you start to get down to the reasons why you are angry, what has caused you to be so upset about a situation or with a person. And that allows you to see a clearer picture of the situation because mm -hmm. when I have not written out something, my mind will just wonder about that whole situation and I've replayed the scenario in my mind a thousand times and added on extra and what if this or what if that when if I would just quiet myself get into a space and a place where I'm going to just write it out and not worry about whatever if i make you slang language whether it's I'm not spelling something right like right. it don't even matter like right right <laughs> get it out and write it out mm -hmm. and you have to be vulnerable and I love how you said that gives you a, a time to just sit with it and hear from God because he wants us to come to him humbly he doesn't want us to come to him in a way where we're trying to make it make ourselves pretend like we're the best person in the situation, so to speak, because right. <laughs> sometimes we're wrong, you know, we're wrong in the situation, but mm -hmm. you know, when you Thank can you be, man. <laughs> yeah, when you can be vulnerable, he can hear you and he can respond to you. And now you're mm -hmm. in a space where you can really see better and you can hear better and you can be instructed and you could be moved, like you said, there might be a time where you might be moved to just apologize to somebody right. to right. try to make a situation, right. you know, right. So, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and you feel so, so much lighter, like, mm -hmm. after, you've, after you've journaled. It's almost like just, you know, taking the trash out. And there, and there are days, now don't get me wrong, I don't just always journal issues. There are days when I just have, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like just gratitude, just that's all I journal is I'm just thankful for, mm -hmm. you know, this space, being able to wake up, being able to sit on this porch, being able to, to write, to see, to mm -hmm. like, there are just some days I just, um, I'm just so thankful um, for all that he has done for me too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's not always a complaint, you know, that we're right. writing in our journals. We're writing down our thoughts. We're writing down our prayers. We're writing down our goals, the things that we want to see, mm -hmm. you know, we're just mm -hmm. writing down our gratitude, um, uh, or we just might even want to write down a special memory, you know, as, um, as an educator, in my professional life, <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a conference that I went, I, I go to it every single year, but 
um, one of the presenters, she talked about this uh, challenging us to do kind of like a journal for us as teachers. It's called 180 Days of Awesome. So she says every single day at the end of the day, journal that one awesome thing in your life that has happened to you that can keep you going because being an educator there is <laughs> there's a lot of days where you will feel wow. like you know you have failed because the student didn't listen or or you know just anything but every single day there is one thing you know that is awesome in your life and we can do that mm -hmm. too even if you're not an educator like every single day there is something good. Like you said, you can just be thankful that we have a life. We can write. We have cool. a home. You know, we have a job that there is one awesome thing that we can always be, you know, grateful for every single day. Because every yeah. day is a gift. Yeah. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Every <laughs> single day. Yeah. My gosh, you answered most of the question before I can even ask you the question. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> that that is okay. That is okay. So you know, life is definitely hard for us, and when we need someone, you know, that we want to talk to, that we want to share our thoughts with, someone that we know is not going to be judgmental, someone that we know is not going to go back and tell, you know, what it is. You can share whatever that is on those pages right there with God. And mm -hmm. the reason why I love journaling so much is because it focuses me, focuses me in on what I need to say and stops me from replaying the situation over and mm -hmm. over and over again. Because when I can't exactly express what I feel to my husband or to my sisters or to my best friend, because they might not understand exactly why I'm feeling like I'm feeling or why I have, have responded. Or like we said earlier, you might just be ashamed of how you have responded in a situation, but you need to move past that. So journaling is not only a way to release things, but it's also a way to give yourself grace and forgiveness. You can find that there, you know, on those pages, you know, when you when you write that out. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I just, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up too. Cause, um, so my profession is I, I am a postpartum doula and a lactation consultant. So I deal a lot with new mommies and, um, every now and then I'll come across a mom that's struggling with postpartum depression. And that's, and even if even if it's not a mom that's struggling with it, I, I'll, that's one of my suggestions is writing it out. Get it out of your head onto something. You can journal. You can talk to, you can do a recording on your phone. You can talk to your husband. You can, um, if you're home by yourself, you can just say it out loud, but you got to get it out of your head because if it sits in your head, and uh, and you keep replaying it, you can possibly walk that out in their lives. And with my postpartum moms, it's usually something negative. Either they don't um, think that they are a good mom or they, or, or they think that this baby is, um, you know, getting on their nerves or so I just, I try to get them to get those emotions out. When I say the word journaling, you can see the expression on their face like I don't want to write and stuff like I, I I wish there was another word we could say instead of journaling because mm -hmm. it's not just sitting with a pad and a right. pencil book open it's it's really just getting stuff out of your head um and um uh, when my mom's take the time to write it out or speak it out of their mouths, they do better. Mm -hmm. These moms do better. And um, just from just being, I, I just told a mom this uh, last week, I am someone entering into a space 
when they're most vulnerable. They just had a baby, hormones are everywhere. Um, you know, they're tired, they're they're not getting rest, the house sometimes looks a mess. So I'm coming into a space and I don't know you. I just I'm just meeting you most of the time. So for somebody to open up and share what's bothering them. Um, I don't feel like I'm a good mom. Sometimes I get sick of my baby. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it irritates me to hear him cry. For them to say it to me, first of all, I am um, just thanking them for being vulnerable enough to say it mm -hmm. because now we can we can work on that. But when I leave, I don't need them to keep meditating on those things. So I have to give them some tools mm -hmm. of what, you know, what uh, outside of going to uh, a psychiatrist and seeing a counselor, because that's not my role. But I have to give them some tools so that when I leave, I know that they're going to be safe. Mm -hmm. So journaling is one of the things that I'm encouraging my moms to do is to write it out. And I won't even say get a book. I'll say if you need a paper towel, put it on the paper towel and throw the paper towel away. Mm -hmm. You know, put it on the napkin and just throw it away. But I need you to get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. So just give the people another perspective of journaling. You don't have to get the book with the pretty cover yeah. You know, you. I just need for for my mom, my mom that's struggling with this, uh, with these negative thoughts in this uh, crucial time in her, in her life. Mm -hmm. I just need her to get those thoughts out of her head. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think sometimes when we say the word journaling, it just automatically turns people off. But it's not about putting pen to paper. It's right. about getting those things out of your head that could cause some issues um, down the line. Mm -hmm. And I like how you said that, that it's not just the pen to the paper because there are times when, you know, I don't have my journal with me. And so I just open right. up my notes on my phone and right. sometimes I can't type it out. You know, sometimes I will turn on the voice recorder and just say mm -hmm. exactly you know, how mm -hmm. I feel. So there's mm -hmm. multiple ways for us to participate in the act of mm -hmm. journaling, right? We don't mm -hmm. have to, right. you know, exactly. do it on, you know, what you would think is a, you know, traditional pen or paper, anything that allows you to get it out. Amen. Get it out. And, and, and I think it's really improved my, my prayer. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I could be praying and I'm like, let me get my pen. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like I can communicate better when I'm writing it out. I used to think that there was something wrong with that, but that's, I think that that's my form of communication to God. So, mm -hmm. and, and nothing is wrong with that because, mm -hmm. you know, um, some people may feel weird, you know, uh, praying out loud. Some people may feel mm -hmm. weird about, you know, especially if you become a new Christian and you're around other people that are not, you know, and you mm -hmm. want to start to pray, but you don't want someone looking at you in a funny way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and just start journaling your prayer well, out, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to be like, what you doing? Right you know what I mean? They, they, they definitely ain't going to think you're praying. <laughs> right. Right, they exactly. Just think you're Big writing it out, but you know, yeah, absolutely. Big prayer for me. Big prayer for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, writing I, out I, your prayers, you know yeah. that. Yeah, I definitely, I have definitely. I think I have the most of my journaling has been, um, like you said, just prayers, just mm -hmm. praying for this person or praying for that person. And then um, one, uh, one, one time I was, um, and I have, you know, spoken about this before, I do struggle with sometimes anxiety and depression. And so one um, time I was really, really in a very bad space and it was so bad. I, I, it was affecting my work and I needed to take a leave of absence. So I took this leave of absence 
And during that leave of absence, I started just writing out all these prayers. It started out me writing out prayers about what I was feeling and just trying to get that out. But then I started praying for other people, other people in my family and all of that. And then for one, a whole month, it was, a, it was in an, um, um, the month of October. I could, I just remember that. So I was wow. off work for like the whole month of October and I was just doing nothing but writing and writing and writing. And out of that, there were so many prayers that the Lord answered, even in my own distress, because I was going through my own personal thing, but then it evolved in me being able to get my stuff out. Now I started praying for other people and that has helped me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean, I just, even now when I think about it and sometimes I go back and I look at all those prayers, it just helps me to remember that God can meet you in any situation and whatever situation you are going through, when you invite him in and when you allow him to come into your situation, mm -hmm. he can change so much. And it's something as simple as writing. So just like you're sharing with your mothers, we don't know how you are coming in and helping them to get mm -hmm. that info, to get that out just by doing something simple as journaling in whatever form it is, you know, that mm -hmm. is helping them so that they may meet another mom and say, Hey, I, I did the same. Exactly. I felt the same way. Well, right. they may recognize the signs of someone going through a situation mm -hmm. like them. And you can say, Hey, this is what I did. This is how I this was I able did. to get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That's the purpose of that too. It's so that we can start helping the next mom. Because I think sometimes we just as moms, we just we just do what we gotta do mm -hmm. and we go get it done. But yeah. I think I think we really need to start paying attention to sometimes we can't just go do what we gotta do. We need mm -hmm. some help. And so when you get help, then you make sure you turn around and and help another mom because she's probably going through the same thing that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why we journal. <laughs> yep. and, that's why we, <laughs> and that's why we journal because we know that this is going to be a tool that's going to get me, mm -hmm. you know, some help. And why not share, you know, your personal experience with how it's helped you so that it may exactly. also help, you know, someone else. And while I was, you know, while I was thinking about this, you know, I had this topic in my mind. Of course, I had you in mind all along mm -hmm. for it anyway, so I'm super uh -huh. glad you said yes. <laughs> but um, I was thinking about, you know, the scripture in Habakkuk, right? And I probably said it wrong. I know a lot of people have different ways of saying it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was thinking about the scripture about, you know, writing the vision and making it plain so that. Uh, you know, whoever sees it, they may run and take a hold of it. And so I kept, I just kept thinking about that. And I kept thinking about that. And I was like, you know, God, like, how, how does this, because there's so many ways that people apply, you know, that scripture mm -hmm. to like writing down your vision and all of that, because it says write out your vision. But the more that I'm um, thinking about it and the Lord is just still pressing that scripture in my mind whatever we see is a vision whatever we are experiencing is our vision that we're seeing we're seeing this vision and we can write it down and he's invited into this vision with us to help us make what we're seeing in our situation plain so that whoever sees it, they can run with it and they can move with that. So when I'm journaling and I'm writing down my experience of what is happening for me, I'm mm -hmm. inviting the Lord in to help me see this vision more clearly of what 
he has for me. And I can run with this. And now others can see me running with, I mean, just running with this vision. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Because um, four years ago, <clears throat> when I left my full-time job to do this business, uh, uh, when I stepped out to do my own business, I remember writing, I remember doing a video about me um, becoming this postpartum doula and I'm going to provide um, uh, support to families that just had a baby. And I remember like I did this whole like 19 minute recording on Facebook and people were like, that's too long. Nobody's going to listen to that. Well, but from that, it didn't even dawn on me that, that my mother, my birth mother, passed away when I was 21 days old. Wow. And I remember him showing me, now you are going to help prevent this from happening to other moms, what happened to you. And coming up, growing up, I, I never like, um, you know, gave thought per se to my mm -hmm. birth mother, my mom who raised me. That's my mom who raised me. That was my mom. Um, did a great job taking care of me, um, taking up for me, fighting for me. But she did a really good job. And like, so there was no like looking back to see who else mm -hmm. was supposed to be my mom. But when I started doing this business, now it's front and center. And that only came from writing it out and um, talking about it. Now he's like, okay, now you ready. Mm -hmm. So, and then I had to journal, I had to start journaling about all of these emotions and feelings that I'm having now about the death of the mother who passed away when I was 21 days old. And I'm just now starting to get to a place where I can talk about it and it doesn't like um, erupt these emotions like they did when I when I first started. Mm -hmm. But it that's just, it gives testament to what the scripture, the scripture was that you just mentioned when we're writing the vision and we're making it plain. And then he, he, um, we invite him into the space. Now he's like shedding more light on mm -hmm. this vision that we're writing, that we're just think we're writing out our vision, mm -hmm. but he's really trying, he's really shining light on the vision and the plans that he has yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so now I have to, I have to talk about that part of my life almost, you know, weekly or monthly mm -hmm. because I'm sharing that with a mom and, um, you know, giving her some energy to do what she needs to do so that she can be here to take care of her own kids and not uh, have somebody else taking care of her kids. So it's, um, it's interesting how you brought that scripture up because writing it out and, and, we're saying making it plain, you know, the scripture says, uh, write the vision, make it plain. Mm -hmm. We think that's what we're doing. But when we invite him into the space, he shines light mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. And now we really see the vision that he has for us. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Well, we're about to wrap this thing up. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, I really do pray that this week, y'all, weekly challenge is to share not just with someone, but to share with God. Share with him your emotions. Mm -hmm. Share with him your vision. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. but enter into an intimate time of sharing, whether you're writing it some of us like to sing it out whatever it is 
journaling it out, drawing it out even, because there are some people that can just draw out whatever it is that they're going through. All of that is a form of getting it out. And that is your weekly right. challenge this week is to get it out. But your focus is not just to be getting it out to just anybody because we want to get it out with the father. He is our safe place. He is our safe mm -hmm. space and place mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he is the one that can help you through whatever it is that you are going through. So before I say that is the winning Wednesday word, Miss Pat, did you have any <laughs> last words to say? <laughs> no, I think you wrapped it up and thank you for um, inviting me into this space. But uh, journaling, I think if we can just remove the word journaling for those that are intimidated by that word and just uh, say something and ref some something like, uh, just get it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just get it out of your head. Um, I think it'll help a lot of people um, transform into these journalers that will really, uh, you know, help them to be the people that God is calling them to be. Well, that's it, y'all. That is the Winning that's Wednesday it. word. Thank y'all for joining me and I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>